what is up everyone jay here with another frame heroes video and today we're gonna take a look at this year's fallen banner and as it is with pretty much every fallen banner there are some very powerful units and this year is no exception so the first unit is going to be fell successor fallen veil so veil is wearing her outfit that she wears the crazy outfit that she wears in engage and this time she is a carless mage infantry i know some people are a little bit disappointed she's not using her dagger from engage but um, I guess she'll get that later, sometime later, but here she is, and uh, you can see her stats spread pretty much the same as her mythic. Uh, not the exact same, obviously, but, uh, you know, high attack and res with low speed of defense, as you might expect for a lot of mages. And you can see her A skill is pretty much still water 5, which we'll get to. But yeah, uh, Veil vale here is going to nuke Goto to a different realm. Um, why they gotta do my man like that, but yeah. Fell Child's Might is her weapon, minus one cooldown. For allies within two space of unit, you reduce damage from attacks by 30% during your that, that allies combat, excluding AOE, so that's some drive DR support. And if unit initiates combat or foe's range equals two, you inflict attack res minus six on the foe, inflict penalty on foe's attack slash res um, equal to 20% of your res inside of combat, so that's true damage. And then you also reduce damage from attacks by 30%. And then you also grant special cooldown charge plus one per attack. And also if your res is greater than or equal to the foe's res plus 10 during combat, you attack twice. So that's why she was able to quad poor Goldman Goto. So that's her weapon. Pretty simple, but it's pretty strong. I mean, that's how she is. Her mythic version was, but this one's even better because it gives her special charges. I don't think her mythic gave her that. With true DR, or not true DR, true damage, uh, special charges, stats, and DR support. So that's pretty good. And then Ice Barrier is a special. Crystalline Water is still Water 5. So now it gives you attack res plus 8 with even less or even more defense debuff. So I think before it was minus 5 defense, now it's minus 8, which makes sense. But you do get the trade off of higher attack and res with also the ability to neutralize panic status or any penalties to your attack and res that take effect on unit at this time at the start of player phase or enemy phase so that's amazing because now you don't have to worry about panic and if you know if you're increasing your res you don't have to worry about debuffs you know for like chill skills and shrines and whatnot so this is amazing so you really get your bang for your buck from this still water 5 so um, i'm a little bit surprised when it when i saw it at first because like wow still water 5 because it still feels like a relatively new skill a uh, still water 4 because you know we've had relatively recent units have that skill uh within the past year or so within the past few months but i guess still water 4 is still not the newest skill because i think it dropped on summer thor a couple years ago so yeah crystalline water still water 5 is pretty crazy to me still but yeah that is her a skill it's going to be good for a lot of res check skills and whatnot and then attack res temple 4 is her b slot that's what her mythic version also came with i'm pretty sure so yeah, that's amazing to help her against guard effects. And then Fell Successor is her C skill. I think this is just a better version of her Fell Protection on her Mythic version, which gives you the Scowl effect and also the ability to stop uh, their special, or sorry, a Pulse Smoke them basically on their foes for attack. And you also grant attack defense res plus four to allies within two spaces. And uh, yeah, so that's amazing support. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just better than uh, Fell Protection. So you know this one works this veil pretty much works very similarly to her mythic version it's not that much different but she's a different color at least so that's veil going to be a really strong um unit in general just a really strong nuke that can definitely catch you off guard and crystalline water is going to be a nice skill for a lot of people if you want to inherit it so yeah um, she can slow her specials or the foe specials so there is mythic veil that's an amazing animation so goodbye goto so yeah veil i mean i expected it to be you know, at least have one engaged character, and that was Veil, but they actually have another engaged character on here, which we'll get to. But the next character is Black and Crow Ursula. So I like Ursula. I don't mind her. It's just kind of crazy. She gets a lot of alts compared to the other members of the Black Fang and stuff because, I don't know, I don't I don't mind her. Ursula's a baddie for sure in every sense of the word, but I feel like she gets too many alts, especially since she's got, she got one last year, I think, on the Canadian banner, right? Was it last year? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Ursula's back as a blue tome cavalier, just like her base version or ghp version and this ursula is definitely no joke so she's back to form here with life and death five essentially except this one's called uh verge of death which is pretty funny so dead crow tome minus one cooldown at start of turn you grant a special cooldown count minus one to unit if you're alive and grant attack speed plus six and desperation to unit and allies within two spaces of unit for one turn so this is kind of similar to her kadan version because i think the kadan version also gave you desperation but i don't think it gave it to your allies i don't think 
Um, so that's pretty cool. So you give it to your allies as well. And then if units HP is equal to 100 at the start of turn, you also grant an additional special cooldown count minus one, because why not? At the start of combat, if you're alive, you grant attack speed plus six to unit, grant bonus to attack and speed equal to 20% of your speed at the start of combat, and you deal, deal damage 20% of unit speed. So you also get basically uh, extra attack and speed and then also uh, <laughs> true damage. And then neutralize effects that prevent units follow-up attacks, so no follow-up. And then if units HP is equal to 100 to start a combat, you also have the no guard effect. So pretty strong weapon, pretty straightforward for the most part, just a lot of offenses because you're just going to stack tons of attack and speed, desperation, and just nuke stuff with your true damage. And also no guard is not going to, you know, that's not going to stop you from, or guard effects aren't going to stop you. So Dead Crow Tone, pretty simple, but pretty good. Desperation status is good for your nukes, so that's amazing. Blazing Thunder is a special to abuse AoEs and then Verge of Death to make those AoEs even stronger because that's the optimal way to increase your AoE damage for the most part. For, or should I say for a lot of builds, unless you're using like uh, Citrine with like still water or you know with the crystalline water that we have now. So Verge of Death gives you attack speed plus eight this time and then inflicts defense res minus eight. And then just like crystalline water, you also can stop penalties and neutralize panic at the start of player phase or enemy phase. So that's pretty cool. Life and Death 5, essentially. It's not as surprising as Crystalline because Life and Death 4 has been out for years, longer than Still Water 4. So I guess it was about time because Life and Death 4 is kind of outdated, I guess. And then a Speed Res Far Trace 4 is her B slot. And then she also comes with Defense Res Smoke. Pretty underrated smoke, in my opinion, but this is uh, definitely pretty good Pathfinder and you know debuffs and whatnot. So that's pretty good. So that is Ursula, or should I say Fallen Ursula. Um, just like Vale and her other version, doesn't really work that much different to her other one. But that's an amazing animation. I love that crow animation. So very similar to her, to her Kadean ult, just like Vale is to her Mythic. So a little bit disappointing when it comes to that for variety. But now we have the Traitor of Nevada, Nurgle. So Nurgle is finally in the game. Nurgle is a fan favorite that a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. And he does not disappoint because this bro is a menace, as we expected, because he is one of the big baddies of the Fire Emblem games. You know, he's the guy behind the scenes and the big main baddie of Fire Emblem 7. And he is a green tome infantry unit and he is playing no games because his weapon that he also has in Fire Emblem 7 is an absolutely disgusting weapon. So here he is with, uh, let me read it just to make sure I pronounce it right. A Reshkigal. So this weapon gives Essence Drain. So Essence Drain is no joke because basically once you attack, you steal the bonus effects of those targets that you attack and also the foes within two spaces of that target and you also neutralize those bonuses so um, obviously we've had effects that steal it like you know um, Tina's Thief and you've had Loki who neutralized it, neutralizes them but not only can he do this steal them and neutralize them he also gives it to his allies so not only can he do it he can also give it to his allies because you can see at start of turn, if he's alive, it grants attack plus six and essence drain to unit and allies within two spaces. So this is going to be insane for pretty much every competitive mode, but especially Aether Raids and uh, Summer Duels. So Nurgle is going to be disgusting to fight. So, And then, of course, he has minus one cooldown. At the start of combat, if he's alive, inflicts attack res minus six on the foe, inflicts penalty on the foe's attack res equal to 20% of units res. So a lot of true damage across pretty much every unit on this banner. And then deals damage equal to the number of bonus effects active on unit times five. So this is true damage um, that's based on the bonus effect that he has. So for him, that's not going to be very hard because obviously you can outsource it to him, but you can also steal it from the foes once you attack. So that's incredible. Uh, max 25, excluding area effect specials. And then also reduces damage by the value equal to the number of bonus effects active on unit times three, excluding stat bonuses, max 15. And also if units attack and trigger unit special, you grant special cooldown count minus X to unit before units first attack. So, yeah, why the heck not just accelerate his cooldown before he attacks? We've seen this before on units like Arlen. So, yeah, uh, not only is Nurgle a uh, threatening support unit, you know, giving people Essence Drain, he can also just nuke you like crazy because he has that ability to accelerate his special and just have a lot of true damage. So, pretty crazy. And then on top of the stuff that I said about Essence Drain stealing and neutralizing those bonuses, you also are able to restore 10 HP to your unit and allies if you defeat the foe. Um, and for Nurgle, it's not going to be too hard for the most part. So that is crazy. Essence Drain is a new status. And it makes sense because, you know, if you played Final 7, he was trying to steal people's quintessence. So it's definitely fitting for the big baddie here. And I think, honestly, he's probably the best unit on this banner because of this. Um, he's going to be a menace in Aether Raids and Summer Rules, like I said. So definitely watch out for him. I'm not going to be looking forward to him uh, fighting against him. But yeah, Eresh Kagal is 
an absolute behemoth of a weapon. Glacies is a special close bonus doubler, just like Arlen had, so that makes sense. Special Spiral 4, and then Defense Res Oath 4. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, Nurgle got justice in Faye because I know a lot of people are wanting him to be in the game, and they've done, you know, a good amount of the big baddie mages, you know, evil big baddie mages justice just sadly Garnef didn't really get much i mean he was a really old ghb so Garnef hasn't really gotten justice in fave but still i'm glad nurgle did at least because this bro is going to be so annoying to fight because you're like oh you can just comfortably stack your statuses on your tanks and whatnot and especially with now with omni tanking returning nurgle is just going to you know stick a middle finger at you and steal all those for himself so that's amazing and if you want him to survive more you can also run like you know, remote sparrow or something I, I think he has good bulk yeah he's got mid max bulk on both sides so he can definitely take hits so um yeah that's amazing so nurgle is definitely disgusting fall nurgle should i say um so yeah there's nurgle and then the rearmed hero of the banner this is the other engaged character i was talking about and it is mother or i was gonna say mommy i guess mommy or mother lumera corrupted dragon mom you know you slay but we really we really need to get you some new clothes because she wears the same clothes in all her versions so far which is pretty funny i mean not, i'm not criticizing it it's just kind of funny um that she's wearing the exact same thing every time pretty much but here she is as a red dragon infantry and lumera fans are eating because lumera is getting a lot of content she just got her mythic version you know earlier this year i think right it was earlier this year right yeah and now here she is as a rearmed hero providing a speedier arcane uh, Dragonstone. So that's pretty cool. So Arcane Fellstone is your weapon. Minus one cooldown. At start of combat, if you're alive, you grant bonus to attack speed, defense res, equal to 25% of foe's attack. So you use the foe's attack uh, against them. Minus four. Maximum 14, minimum five. Reduce damage from foe's first attack by 40%, including the brave hits. And grant special cooldown charge plus one to unit per attack. And if your speed is higher than the foe's speed, you have no follow-up. And then, of course, the effective damage. So this is a really good Arcane weapon, and this is pretty much better than Arcane Grima for the most part. Um, I'd say especially for speeder dragons like her. That's amazing. Iceberg Speed Res Scowl. So we're getting another tier 4 Scowl finally. I feel like it's been a while. Just like her mythic version came with attack speed scowl. This one comes with speed res scowl. That's amazing for the stoppage of specials. And then she also comes with Counter War 4. I think Brave Corn was the only unit with this. So it's about time we got someone else with this. And then Corrupted Dragon is her C skill. Let me look at this. So after unit attacks or if Kanto triggers after Kanto applies divine vein stone okay so it's similar to her mythic version who also gives this similar kind of thing i think this space is within five rows and five columns centered on units so that's amazing range at start of or sorry uh, grants plus four to all stats to allies within five rows of five, co five columns centered on unit and also has no guard so i think her mythic version also did that and then if there's an ally within five rows and five columns centered on unit you grant plus four to all your stats on unit and neutralize effects so yeah no guard as well and then also when unit special triggers, you neutralize foes. So DR piercing, like Deadeye and stuff. So that's pretty amazing. So nice support and also pretty nice combat abilities with her kit. So yeah, this uh, Arcane Fellstone is going to be really good for those speedy dragons for sure. And uh, going to be a rearmed weapon you can definitely pull for. And Divine Vein Stone is also a nice support as well. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, she's just like Lumera, not Lumera. She's just like Vale and Ursula. Not really working that differently compared to other versions, which is a bit disappointing when it comes to variety. You know, if you're building like a team of these, if it's your favorites. Because I'm just thinking of like, you know, as a person who has Martha and them, I like to have them with as much variety as possible. But then a lot of them became sort of entries, but became, you know, they were sort of entries. But at least when they were sort of entries, they all kind of worked a little bit differently. But with these, like, Veil kind of works the same as her mythic. Ursula is always the same. You know, mage, uh, cavalry unit that just nukes. And then Lumera is kind of like a mix of both, you know, mix phase dragon that also provides Divine Vein Stone. So, yeah, it's not that much different, but still really cool. I like the art all around. Lumera's art is really cool. And the GHB unit is a Lloyd. So Lloyd's Redemption is here. Uh, his art is already out. And, um, yeah, Lloyd is finally getting an alt after, you know, being one of the heroes with the most infamous art that a lot of people did not like. So I'm glad that he's getting a new art. And even though he's possessed and crazy... At least he looks a lot better than his base version, in my opinion. So I think it's a W for Lloyd fans. And, you know, his brother Linus already got his fallen version. Uh, so, yeah, Lloyd definitely getting his, which is nice. I like to see it. And uh, I don't think we know. As of me making this video, I don't know if he has a PRF or not. But either way, I do like that Lloyd is the fallen choice this time. Because there is a lot of fallen choices in Fire Emblem. You know, there's just a lot. Like, uh, don't think we're running out anytime soon. Because we still have a lot of candidates like Scarlet. 
We have the Shezes. Uh, we have the Arcanine and Princesses that they haven't done, like Lena and Lee. So, uh, yeah, they could have chosen a lot, but I'm, I'm, I do like the choices. I not really agree with Ursula, like I mentioned, and Lumera is kind of another, you know, more engaged. But I wouldn't mind it just Veil. That would have been fine. But still, uh, Nurgle's awesome, and uh, Veil's pretty cool. So yeah, that is my reaction to this banner. Let me know what you guys think down below. Good luck if you are summoning on this one, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Please stay safe out there. Peace out.